Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to take another quick look at Star Trek Attack Wing. Today we'll be looking at the USS Excelsior expansion. It's a Federation ship, uh, Excelsior class, uh, captained by Sulu in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. And I also believe that uh, the USS Enterprise B, NCC-1701B, uh, was Excelsior class, as featured in Star Trek Generations or the seventh movie. Uh, so, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what this particular expansion has to offer. Okay, here's a quick snapshot of the components. Again, um, this is minus the tokens. I usually don't include tokens in these expansion videos just because um, they tend to repeat themselves. Um, just keep in the back of your mind that the tokens that usually come with expansions like this usually reflect the ship class in question. Here is the model. Let's go ahead and focus in on this. As you can see, um, it's a little bit longer than your Enterprise. Um, for those of you not familiar at all uh, with uh, Star Trek lore at all, or just getting into the Excelsior for the first time, um, this is basically uh, supposed to be a stronger class ship. Um, one that was introduced, I believe, in Star Trek III, um, The Search for Spock. Uh, Kirk had to commandeer the Enterprise out of space dock, and uh, a, an Excelsior class ship had to chase it. Um, and it was the first ship to, I believe, introduce transwarp drive. But anyway, getting back to the model, um, as you can see, pretty detailed, though it's a little weird. The, uh, the saucer module there is bent at an angle, nothing I did. It just came out of the box like this. So besides that, no other complaints. As far as the um, cover here for the base, um, just like with the Reliant, you've got a 180 degree firing arc. You've also got a rear firing arc there for torpedoes or secondary weapons that support it. Um, it's two-sided. One side is for the Excelsior and the other side is just for your regular ship. Um, as far as the maneuver dial goes, um, let's see here, starting at minus two backward, it's a red maneuver. Um, it can make a slight left, uh, straight, or slight right at one. Those are all green maneuvers. It can make a hard left at two uh, or hard right at two. That's a red or stressful maneuver. Um, it could make a slight left or a slight right at two. That's a white maneuver. And it can go straight at two. That is a green maneuver. At three, it can also make a slight or a hard left or a hard right at three. That's a stressful maneuver. Slight left or slight right at three and going straight are all white maneuvers. It can also go four straight ahead. That's a white maneuver. Now, as far as the uh, scenario that came with this particular expansion, Operation Retrieve, it sort of mimics um, what Captain Sulu tried to do in an episode of uh, Star Trek Voyager. Um, it was never um, discussed in uh, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, but Sulu actually uh, tried to make his own rescue attempt. And there was an episode, I can't remember the name of it, in Voyager, but uh, Tuvok had to go back in time in his head um, to sort of fight off this weird alien uh, parasite that was uh, mimicking itself as a, as a repressed memory. But anyway, um, yeah, in this particular instance, uh, this scenario, one player is going to be uh, taking control of an Excelsior class ship, uh, while the other is going to, um, I believe, just take on the role, I believe, of the Klingons in this case. I'm not sure if they have to be Klingons or not. I didn't really look at this yet. Klingon player. But anyway, um, basically the Federation's going to be trying to get to the objective token and beam Kirk and McCoy aboard. Um, this is when they were captured uh, on Ro uh, and brought to Rora Pente. Uh, but basically Sulu has to try and rescue Kirk and McCoy and escape with them while the Klingon player has to try and stop them. Uh, by either uh, blowing up the enemy's ship or doing something else. I can't remember. But yeah, not a bad scenario. I haven't tried it yet, but looking forward to. And here's your standard guide card. Um, again, it's something that uh, Star Trek Attack Wing does that X-Wing usually does not, so I'm glad to see this. Um, this is basically all the maneuvers that I just showed you on the maneuver dial. As far as the ships are concerned, you've got, um, again, this is just all Ex Excelsior class ships, but you've got the USS Excelsior itself. Attack 3, Defense 1, um, Hall 5, and Shields 4. Special Ability. After you move, if no enemy ships are within range 1 of your ship, you may perform a scan action as a free action. That's pretty powerful. It can take the Evasive Maneuver, Target Lock, Scan Action, or Battle Stations Action. Bunch of upgrades down here and a point cost of 26. And you also got just your regular Federation Starship Excelsior class. Same stats, except it's one shield lower, has less upgrades, and has a point cost of 24 as opposed to 26. 
Alright, and as far as your captains are concerned, you've got Hikaru Sulu, Captain Skill of 6. As an action, disable one of your, I believe that's an elite upgrade, to remove an opponent's uh, target lock token from your ship. Remove one corresponding token from the opponent's ship as well. Um, Captain Skill 6, upgrade cost of 4. Pretty good. You've got Styles here. Um, he was the fellow that was chasing uh, Kirk in Star Trek 3 as um, Kirk tried to commandeer the Enterprise to go after Spock. Um, his special ability, add one additional modification icon to your ship's upgrade bar. Captain skill, three point cost of two. And just a regular Federation captain, no special abilities. Captain skill, one uh, point cost zero. This doesn't make much sense to me. I don't know... I, Sometimes Star Trek Attack Wing does things with their cards that don't make a lot of sense to me. This particular captain, I don't remember his name, but he was in command of the USS um, Grissom in Star Trek III. It was an Alberth class science vessel, not an Excelsior class. So why they used him in this expansion is beyond me. Again, sometimes, sometimes I see some weird cards in here doing weird things. But anyway... Uh, Getting on to the upgrades. Dimitri Valtain, if your ship has a scan token beside it when you attack, you may re-roll up to two of your attack dice. That has a uh, point cost of three. Janice Rand, um, as seen in the original series, that young blonde that always had the huts for Kirk. After your ship moves, discard Rand to allow your captain to perform the action on one of his um, elite upgrades as a free action this round. So that's the elite action. I don't know what that other one was. Whatever this chevron is. But anyway, uh, point cost of two. Low jaw. Uh, when your ship fires a, is that a torpedo upgrade that requires you to disable it, you may disable low jaw instead of that torpedo upgrade. That has a point cost of two. Photon torpedoes. Nothing fancy here. Uh, attack dice four, two to three range. As an attack target lock. Spend your target lock and disable this card to perform this attack. You may convert one of your battle station results to a critical hit. Uh, you may fire this weapon from your forward or rear firing arcs. Point cost of three. Faint. Discard this upgrade to target a ship at range two to three. If, you're, uh, if you attack that ship this round, it rolls two less defense die. That has an upgrade cost of four. Transwarp Drive. During the activation phase, if your maneuver dial re reveals a uh, 4 or 5 maneuver, you may instead use a 6 straight maneuver. That's pretty good. Although I didn't see a 5 straight maneuver on the maneuver template, just a 4 straight. So this could be used for another ship that has a 5 straight maneuver that has a uh, cost of 3. And finally, the positron, bre uh, positron beam. During the planning phase, you may discard this upgrade to target a ship at range 1 of your ship. That ship immediately receives an auxiliary power token that has an upgrade cost of 2. And there you have it. Uh, once again, I didn't cover everything, but hopefully it gives you a good idea as to whether or not you actually want to pick this up and add it to your fleet. You can check out my review of the base game at www.dadsgamingaddiction.com, or you can click on the links in the below description that will take you there as well. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.